Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. I am a lawyer and a teacher of law. When I was a little girl, I was fascinated with words. And I actually used to read the dictionary. And so one day, as I was reading through the dictionary, I came across the word as, A-S-S. -S -S. And I was curious to find out the meaning of the word. And uh, the meaning that was given was donkey. So I went to the word donkey, and I wanted to find out how is donkey explained. And guess what? The meaning of donkey was us. So us, donkey. Donkey, us. Fast forward about 15 years later, when I joined the law school, and again, I wanted to find out the meaning of words. And I remember the late Professor Okotho Gendo gave us an essay to define the meaning of the word land. And you know, we just realized how difficult it is to define any word in law. So I picked just two definitions from two statutes, two laws that have, are no longer in force, the Registered Land Act and the Registration of Titles Act. The definition in the Registered Land Act is very brief. It just says land includes land covered with water, all things growing on land and buildings and other things permanently affixed to land. Now immediately I realized there was a problem because my grammar teacher had told me that you never define a word by using it. So here is the definition, land includes land covered with water. So what is land? The other definition is very long. I will not even attempt to read through it. I counted 76 words in that definition. I will just read the first few. And it says, land includes land and benefits to arise out of land or things embedded or rooted in the earth or attached to what is so embedded for the permanent beneficial enjoyment of that to which it is so attached and on and on, as some would say, ad nauseam. So 76 words to define one word. So you can see that it is not an easy thing. Now, the relationship between language and law is intimate. Because language is essentially, law is essentially language. And it may be expressed actually in nonverbal forms. Have you thought that you can express law in nonverbal forms? If you see traffic lights, what does that suggest? Is there some legal form there? If you hear sirens from a police car or an ambulance, is there some legal content, content there? We have speech acts which have legal import. For example, if you promise to repay a loan or you accept an offer for the price of property, that is a speech act. You're saying certain things, but they have certain uh, legal implications. Where two people, sorry, at a wedding, declare, I do. Those two words have legal significance. A witness testifying in court, the president swearing to uphold the constitution of Kenya, etc. And what we see is that law and language are actually pretty similar, if structurally similar. They are both generated through social practices, resulting in organized and more or less formalized communication systems in the sense that they are both governed by their own rules of creation and reproduction and, all, and both generate meaning. For today, I want to pose the question, what is the constitutive power of law? What role does law play in shaping physical forms, public and private institutions, individual and community capacities and relationships, and even relations between individuals and the state. And I have picked three things. One is legal definitions, which I have already alluded to. And what we find is that in legal definitions, we tend to have exclusion and inclusion. I teach criminal law, and one of the first lectures I have is to define two types of offenses, felony and misdemeanor. And when we look at the definition of misdemeanor, it says, Misdemeanor means any offense which is not a felony. 
So then you have to go to felony and see, and even that de definition is not very clear, and I will not bore you with it. So legal definitions, that is an exclusion. A misdemeanor is an offense which is not a felony. But then there is also inclusion. The same, one of the definitions I read earlier, land includes land, so there is inclusion. The other thing I'd like to say is on legal constructs. The law actually creates reality out of, one might say out of nothing, by having certain forms, certain constructs, such as person, we, talk, we heard about the house and the home, etc. There is one case in, which is very famous in Canada and I, I think in the rest of the world, it's called the person's case. And it involved the question of whether women in Canada qualified as persons to sit in the Senate of Canada. The case went from the lower levels all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada and then went to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, which for the lawyers you know was the very highest court in England. They had to travel from Canada to London to hear the matter. And finally, the, the Privy Council declared that women were persons for purposes of occupying seats at the Senate. I'll just read for you, and I know time is not very good, but I'll just read for you what one woman says. When the, the chief petitioner in that, uh, in that case, one of the petitioners had this to say, the iron dropped into the souls of women in Canada when we heard that it took a man to decree that his mother was not a person. And then lastly, I want to speak to the question of legal fictions. A legal fiction being a fact which is assumed or created by courts. And then the courts use that to make a decision or to apply a legal, a legal rule. And um, a fiction, one of, an example of a fiction which is relevant for us is that everyone knows the law. Everyone knows the law. So as soon as the law is published, the whole world is supposed to know that law. And the question, of course, is does everyone know the law? And I usually tell my students, if we all knew the law, then we would not be here sitting, reading law. So obviously it is an untruth, but it is applied. And so for me, what I would wish to leave with us is how can we reimagine law? How can we deconstruct law in such a way that we remove that aura of mystique that the legal fictions, the legal constructs, constructs, so that the ordinary person is able to understand law. So I thank you very much.